You do realize that we're never getting the truth out of this person, right? Greetings, and welcome back to Here's What I Heard. I'm Laura Degatis, your hostess. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. This week, I'd like to cover a topic that our grandpa-in-chief keeps claiming that Rick Scott has this ultra-maga agenda uh, in which he's going to do nothing but raise taxes and divide everybody a lot further. So I kept wanting to know, what exactly is in Rick Scott's um, proposal because we know, like I said before, that we're never going to get the truth out of our grandpa in chief. You do realize that, right? He's lied since probably coming out of the womb, which he was actually allowed to do, but that's a different topic. I went to Rick Scott's website and found an article that he had written for the Washington Examiner on just this topic. And I'm going to read it to you so that you'll know the other side of what our Grandpa-in-Chief keeps claiming is so bad for America. Ultra MAGA, he calls it. That actually sounds like a cartoon character to me, but then again, look who it's coming from. But before we go into all of that, please give me a subscribe, a like, a comment, a share. A donation would be the ultimate. All of my links are below for all of my alternatives as well. You know how this place is. So click on some of them, will ya? Don't forget also, too, on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central Time, the Talk To Me America Live call-in talk show, where the world wants to know what you have to say. So call me and tell them like it is. Now on to the article. Washington Examiner, Restoring America. Washington elites oppose my plan to rescue America. Here's what's in it. Like I said before, we heard a bunch of times that uh, our grandpa in chief keeps claiming that it's going to just raise taxes on Americans, uh, on the 75% of Americans that really need the tax breaks the most. As if his policies haven't raised things so high right now that everybody's mad at him, but it's Rick Scott's fault. We'll see what he says. On March 14th, 2022, 6 a.m. by Senator Rick Scott. I triggered a lot of people in Washington by putting out a plan to rescue America from the radical woke Democrats who are trying to destroy this country. I believe that we won't stop the woke socialist crowd and turns this country around without a plan. And I believe that the public deserves to know what Republicans will do when given the chance to govern. And actually, this is another lie that our grandpa in chief tells, keeps telling us, is that Republicans have no plan, none at all. But this is what we're going to do. They have nothing. They don't care about you. They don't, which actually neither side really cares about you. But to lie to you and tell you that there's no plan and then turn around and tell you that Rick Scott, and he actually tells you, that, turns around and tells you that Rick Scott actually has a plan. That's not no plan. We go on. Demo Democrats, he says, predictably lost their minds. They're always losing their minds. They lose their minds over breaking a fucking fingernail, for crying out loud. So this is no surprise either. Democrat National Committee Chairman Jamie Harrison called it a fascist manifesto. Of course they would. And of course, like my great-grandmother always says, it takes one to know one. The White House has spent more time lying about my plan than they have trying to address inflation. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer's PAC called it cruel and backwards. MSNBC's Joy Ann Reed, which why we listen to anything she ever says, said that I envy the Taliban. She gets dumber every every day. She, do, she does. She gets dumber every day. Either that or her writers get dumber every day and she just likes the money. And the Washington Post's Jennifer Rubin another prize winner, calls it a frightful expression of white grievance. Sounds pretty racist to me. 
I guess I hit a nerve. If I have the liberal politicians who are running this com who are ruining this country and out of touch liberal beltway chattering class attacking me, I'm doing something right. And he's probably right about that. So let's take a look at my plan, which the Democratic Party has dubbed a fascist manifesto. I can actually show you a fascist manifesto. I'm sure this isn't it. Number one, I believe our children should say the Pledge of Allegiance, respect the flag, learn that America is a great country, and choose the school that best fits them. How fascist of me. My plan says government will never again ask people to disclose their race, ethnicity, or skin color on any government form. We need to end the Democrats' racial politics and seek to divide rather than unite us. I guess this is what the woke left calls an expression of white grievance. Everyone else calls it common sense. Yeah, I've always wondered about that too. Throughout my entire life, we've heard, we've heard these people in Washington say, minorities this, minorities that, aren't we all Americans? I grew up with everybody, it didn't really matter. It never mattered. It's like, somebody gets a baseball scholarship, yay! Nobody looked at the color of his skin. I don't think anybody should have to divulge that. That should be as private as your sex life, I think. Especially when it comes to um, jobs or anything like that. Nobody needs to know that. Do you have the qualifications? Can you do the job? Are you fit for the position? No matter what it may be. Government or otherwise. My plan calls for funding, not defunding the police, because law enforcement are the good guys and the criminals are the bad guys. We need to enforce our laws and fire prosecutors that refuse to do their jobs. It appears from the State of the Union address that even President Joe Biden's pollsters have figured this out. Yes. In fact, a lot of them are now backtracking on that after they've been threatened with being voted out of office because they are not protecting their country or their areas like they've vowed to do. We need borders. We need to secure the border. Period. Nations have borders and it's time to secure ours once and for all. I, I can give you, I can write you an encyclopedia on why. And, I mean, and we don't mind you coming over here. Just don't sneak in. Just don't sneak in. They know everything about everybody that lives here already. If you got something to hide, hey, that's on you. My plan calls for growing America's economy, starving Washington's economy, and stopping socialism. That's not a bad thing. We need to shrink the federal government and pay down our national debt. Refusing to do so is an abdication of our moral responsibility to future generations. True. And of course, Biden comes in and says, oh, I've done the very most of any president ever to decrease the deficit. Oh, okay, so spending all these trillions and trillions of dollars in Ukraine and uh, the Build Back Better and the, the money that you sent out that didn't actually even get to anybody that really needed it in, in uh, um, aid for the, the, uh, the, the, the COOF and all that other stuff, that, that, that got rid of the deficit, that, that lowered the deficit, did it? This one won't make me very popular in Washington. We need to eliminate all federal programs that can be done locally and enact term limits. But not just for elected official. We need term limits for federal bureaucrats as well. Hallelujah! Of course, this is why they don't like him, because he's taking away their pennies. He's taking away their power. The permanent ruling class in Washington is bankrupting us with inflation and debt, so they must be removed. For you, for you the people, to have more, Washington must have less. Indeed. And they need to stop talking bullshit about taxing the rich and making these corporations pay more when they're subsidizing them and it gets put right back into their pockets. Don't talk to me about raising taxes and don't talk to me about raising all this on everybody else because you know damn well you're not. You're one of them. You are the rich. It won't make you very popular in Washington, but it sure as hell probably would make you pretty popular with the American people. I would venture to say people are really, really tired of being bullied 
and told how bad they are for complaining about it. These people don't deserve this kind of power. My plan also calls for protecting the integrity of our democracy and stopping left-wing efforts to rig elections. <laughs> he put that mildly. The Democrats don't believe they can win based on their ideas, so they want the game the system uh, to game the system and legalize voter fraud to stay in power. <clears throat> they didn't even do it legally. Uh, they didn't even, yeah, they did it. They 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 passed some laws to make it possible, but it's still not legal. My plan calls for protecting, defending, and promoting the traditional family, which the fanatical left seeks to devalue and redefine by undermining parents and attempting to replace them with government programs at all costs. We will not allow socialism to place the needs of the state ahead of the family. Yes, please stop trying to rip... You know, they're screaming and yelling about kids being ripped out of their uh, parents' arms, which we didn't even know if they were their parents. You, you heard about the scams down in the South. Uh, not to mention the fact that as soon as Biden got in office, he built more of those cages. But it's okay to kill them in the womb. And it's okay to rip them away from their parents here so that they can be indoctrinated into weirdos. Basically, what he's saying is get the government out of people's faces. Let these people survive. Let these people thrive. The United States is supposed to be based on freedom, freedom of choice. So all these other people have had their freedom of choice. Why is it that they now want to take everyone else's away? They're not Americans, in my opinion. Here's a controversial one, which actually shouldn't be. Men are men and women are women and unborn babies are babies. We believe in science, enough said. My plan says people should be free to welcome God into all aspects of their life. The Democratic Party and its big tech allies are not merely secular. Secular, They have virtually created a new religion of wokeness that is increasingly hostile toward people of faith. It's increasingly hostile towards anybody that doesn't go along with their absolute la-la land bullshit. And they're willing to kill people to be able to kill people. Tell me that's not an oxymoron. They are determined to drive any mention of God out of the public view. We will not be silenced, canceled, or told what words to use by the politically correct crowd. Yes, amen to that. Not to mention the fact that if they don't believe in him, why are they so adamant about getting rid of him? What difference does it make to you if he doesn't exist? Hmm? What difference does it make to you if he doesn't exist? Actually, what it is, is they know that he exists, and he, they know that he is actually number one in a lot of people's uh, world. They don't want them to be ruled by the Bible or by their own thoughts or their own choices that were actually given to us by our Creator. They want to be your God. They want you to depend on them. In which you know they would never do anything but take from you. Oh, we've got to have this more money. We've got to have this until you can't afford anything. And then they might decide whether or not you're worthy of standing in line for their eggs or their toilet paper that rubs you like sandpaper. So, no. You can't have those freedoms. And I will talk against you. And the last point of my plans that the Democrats have dubbed a fascist manifesto... We are Americans. We should put America first. That this is a controversial statement shows just how out of touch today's Democratic Party is from reality and the views of the people. The Democratic Party has made its opposition to my Rescue America plan known as you can as you keep as you keep hearing our grandpa in chief hammering away at it. Not to mention the fact I looked at all of this stuff. There's not one mention of anything about raising taxes on anybody. Not one. Not a single fucking word. And it's like I told you, I guarantee you he didn't just write down, we're going to just raise taxes on 75% of the Americans. Bullshit! 
They oppose my plan, which promotes American exceptionalism, the traditional family, and patriotism. U.S. energy decouples from communist China, makes our tax system fairer to the working class who are paying an increased share of the tax burden while they keep screaming that they're making the other, the, the 1% pay more, which is absolute nonsense. In fact, if that was the case, they wouldn't be placed in office. I'm, that's my take on that and whatever. I'm happy to have this fight and I believe the people are with me. Know this for certain. Anytime a Republican steps up and offers solutions, Schumer and the Democrats will pervert and twist their words into false attacks anytime and every time. To live in fear of or parrot these false attacks is a demonstration of terrible weakness. This is a time for strength. True. And I believe he's right about this. Now, I'm not, I'm not one for forcing people to pledge allegiance to the flag. But it is kind of a tradition and it's one of those things that you teach your children patriotism of their own country. And you let them know, hey, if you don't agree with this, that's the reason why there's a giant globe. And it's also the reason why we have sovereign states. If you don't like it here, you don't like the rules here, either campaign to change them or move to another state that you do like their rules. That you don't have to do the things you don't feel like doing. That's the whole point of this country. You are free to move about. You are free to go and make your fortune somewhere, even if you weren't born in the right place or if you don't agree with whatever. But you're also free to help change that. If you can persuade enough people to vote for you and to vote for your ideas and all that other stuff, then psh, you got it made. But that's what it's about. I, I, like I say, the only thing I really don't agree with is making people pledge allegiance to the flag. That, that sounds, uh, you know, but the, again, the flag's not racist either. The flag stands for American people. That's any race, creed, color. Are we perfect? No. Is any country or state perfect? No. And you know why? Because nobody is perfect. And if you expect anyone to be perfect, then you're going to be disappointed for your entire life, for your entire being. You do you, let others do others. But if you expect perfection out of anything or anybody, you're always going to be disappointed. You're always going to be angry. You're always going to be an asshole actually <laughs> because you yourself are not perfect the only way to get a perfect world is to work on yourself people actually copy others all the time so if you act cool and you act good people are gonna want to act like you too but if you like act like a moron or you rip things apart or you do bad things people are gonna act like that too and then you're gonna wonder why nobody wants to be around you or them I didn't see anything in here about taxes. You didn't see any, and I told you before, you probably wasn't going to be any lines in there, we're going to raise taxes on everybody. <laughs> no, that's not the way those things work. And if he thinks that uh, trying to lower the deficit and getting rid of some of these governmental agencies that do absolutely nothing but suck dollars out of us, how is that going to inflate anything? So it's like I said, I, I wanted to share this with you. I'm, I, I'm sorry that I couldn't find the original document. I looked all over for it. I figured it would be on his website. Uh, but he does let you know what's in it. And uh, he also lets you know what the Democrats are calling it. Which probably means that they haven't even read it. And not to mention the fact that I didn't hear anything about Ultra Maga in it at all. So, another thing that our grandpa-in-chief made up. But again, like I said at the very beginning, don't ever expect the truth out of this president. I do hope you enjoyed my video today. I know I ranted just a little bit, but things are starting to get to the point where we are having to really fight back on this stuff because all they do is spew bullshit or lies or something that disparages someone on the other side. They scream and yell that the other side has no plan while all they do is scream and yell while we come out with plans. I've never seen it where the Republicans don't have something out there 
and the Democrats always say, oh, they have no plan. Now, what the hell was this? Not to mention the fact that Biden himself, they have no plan. But Rick Scott's plan? Seriously? No plan, but Rick Scott's plan. <laughs> anyway, give us a like, a subscribe, a comment, and a share. That actually helps me the most on this. Help this help my channel to grow. I would like to... Uh, I've had the same 400 followers on YouTube for almost eight months now. Um, so share, share, share. And of course, a donation would be the ultimate. So all my links are down below. So click on some of them, will ya? Also, don't forget, 7 p.m. Thursdays, Central Time, the Talk To Me America live call-in talk show where the world wants to know what you have to say. So call me and tell them like it is. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Until next time, AMF. Yeah.